Let's try to understand the Kirchhoff's current law and the Kirchhoff's voltage law in this video. So this is a normal wiring setup and this is what I call a junction. Let us call it junction A. So what does Kirchhoff's current law says? The current leaving the junction is equal to the current entering that junction. So the current that is leaving that junction, so in this case, this is our junction, and the arrows show that the IB and the IC currents are going away from the junctions. That means they are leaving the junction, and IA is the current that is entering the junction. That is, it's entering towards point A. So, how can we express this thing mathematically? The current entering the junction should be equal to the current leaving the junction. We can also call this as the conservation of current. So, IA, current entering the junction, equals to IB plus IC. So, this is the equation we can form with the Kirchhoff's current law. So, now let's try to work on a little more complex example. I mean, come on, we guys are in college, right? <laughs> a little more complex example won't hurt, yeah? So let's take junction A, for example, now here. Now, if you have watched the previous part, from junction A, the current enters junction A should be equal to the current exiting junction A. Now, look at the diagram clearly. I1 is entering junction A. I2 is also entering junction A. I4 is also entering junction A. And I6, oh, okay, so all are entering the junction A. So how can we form this equation? The currents entering the junction, that is I1 plus I2 plus I6 plus I4 equals to the current exiting junction, which in this case is a big egg or zero. So this is for no, junction, oh, I'm sorry, no, this is for junction A. So now let's solve um, KCL equations for junction B, for example. So for B, the currents entering the B should be equal to the current exiting the B. So in this case, I6 is exiting from B and I5 is also exiting from B. There's nothing about. So how can we write this statement? The current entering B is zero equal to the current exiting B, that is I6 plus I5. Mm, that's basically it. You can also write I6 plus I5 equal to 0, but that doesn't make any difference. So I won't waste time on that, but I just did. Once again, oh my god, no. Okay, so let's start for C. So now let's do um, the KCL equations for the um, junction C here. The currents that are entering the junction C, C should be equal to the currents exiting. So I5, you see here I5 is um, coming towards C, that means it's entering C. I4 is going away, and I3 is also going away from C. So I5 is the current entering, so I5 is equal to the current exiting that is going away from the junction, that is I4 plus I3. So going away from junction plus another current going away from junction. So for the node C or the junction C, I5 equals to I4 plus I3 is the equation. And that's how you can form equations for many circuits using the KCL law. And you can form um, the equations, the certain equations. You can add or subtract them, and you can find the values of certain currents through um, flow, flowing towards a junction or flowing away from the junction. And that's when things get really useful because when you have complicated circuits, um, when you go more, when you go to the higher levels of electrical engineering, you might get really complicated circuits. You know, the type of circuits that takes me five minutes to draw. Oh my god, it's so complex. I'm not even going to solve this thing. It's going to take me forever. But yeah. <laughs> now, let's start with the KVL that I call the Kirchhoff's voltage law. So, simply put, this is a normal sample circuit. I'm going to show you how to calculate voltages from it uh, later words. But, but first, let me explain you what is the Kirchhoff's voltage law. So, simply put, Inside a loop, the sum of voltages entering, oopsie, n, 
entering from the positive terminal is equal to the sum of voltages entering from the negative terminal. So this is how I can put this in an equation. So let's see. Let's um, go clockwise here, okay? So clockwise, so um, first element that comes in front of us is VA. It goes from plus to minus. So VA plus, so it's going from plus to minus, plus VC. It's going from plus to minus, plus VD is equal to the voltage is entering from the negative terminal which is vb in this case since vb is um the current is entering from negative terminal here equals to v times b so now for example let's take this circuit to calculate voltages using the kvl so a b c d e f are the batteries and b and d are unknowns so let's take loop a for example so this is my first loop um wait no this can't be my first loop. This has to be my first loop because in this loop, these two voltages are totally unknown. So when more than two voltages are unknown, um, and in this loop, just one voltage is unknown, that is this one. So I can use this loop to calculate VB first, and then I can use this loop to calculate VD when I get to know the value of VB. So let's take the outer loop first. The voltages, the sum of the voltages should be equal to zero. Let's start from A. It's going from negative to positive since the battery terminal has minus plus. So here it's going from negative to positive. So minus of 5 plus B is unknown. But it's going from positive to negative. So it's plus VB. It's going from positive to negative, the value of C. So it's going to be plus 2. E is going from positive to negative, which is 1 volts, so it's going to be plus 1. And this um, F is going from negative to positive, so it's going to be minus 9 equal to 0. So minus 5 plus VB plus 3 minus 9 is minus 6 is equal to 0. So we get the value of VB as 15. So now we have the value of VB. Let's calculate the value of VD by this inner loop. Let's start from A again. It's minus and plus, so it's going from negative to positive. So minus 5, it's going from positive to negative. So it's going to be, since VB is 15, we just got it. Wait, I didn't write it? Oh. So plus 15, it's going from positive to negative. So plus 2, it's going from negative to positive, the voltage for D. So it's going to be minus VD equal to 0. So it's going to be 10 minus 10 plus 2, 12. 12 is equal to VD. So the value of VD equals to 12. So that's how I know the value of VD equals to... So let's take this circuit, for example. It's a simple circuit, but it can be the best circuit to determine whether you actually understand KVL and KCL. So here, the things that we don't know are the currents and voltages of the B system and the C system. And the arrows are given. So let's use KCL first to um, understand the current of VB or the B system. So in this value, I'm going to consider this point as a junction. And since this point is a junction, IA value is entering the junction and IB value is also entering the junction, but there is no current exiting the junction. So um, in this situation, I can consider that. Um, no current is exiting the junction. So IA plus IB current entering equals to current exiting, that is zero. So IA equals minus of IB, which is, since IA is 5 amperes, IB is minus of 5 amperes. So IB value becomes minus of 5 amperes. And now, we can calculate the current IC with the values of IA and IB. So what are we going to do? Let's use the KCL again. 
but this time we are going to use the junction um, let's say we can we can use this junction for example um, so the current entering the junction should be equal to the current exiting the junction so what current is entering these this junction so IB is entering this junction with a positive current so IB IC is entering the junction IC and ID is also entering the junction so ID so applying the KCL formula here the current entering the junction and there is no current exiting the junction so IC plus ID plus IB equal to zero so how can we apply this formula here I know the value of IB that is minus 5 plus ID I know the value of ID that is 3 plus IB oops I know the value of IB is minus 5 plus IC is the thing that I don't know so plus IC should be equal to 0 so doing the math here IC becomes equal to 2 so the value of IC becomes 2 amperes and that's how we got the value of IC now let's do um, voltages for KVL let's let's apply KVL for to calculate VB and VC now first we have to find the loops here so what loops you can possibly figure out um, in this um, system of circuits and systems which where you can find um, more than a known voltage so that you can find another unknown voltage here this loop can help VD and VC so if we go clockwise here KVL says the sum of the um, summation of all the voltages equal to zero um, respecting the sign conventions of course so let's consider um okay let this thing be plus and minus I forgot to mention it earlier mm, yeah better perfect so since we are going clockwise here, um, I'm considering going from negative to positive as negative voltage and positive to negative as a positive voltage. So VC, so junction, I'm starting from here, minus VC, going here, plus minus, so it's going to be plus of VD equal to zero. Sum of these voltages across loop equal to zero. And here we know the value of VD as 10 holes, so minus of VC plus 10 equal to 0 which gives us the value of VC as equal to 10 and that's how you know the value of VC oops again value of VC equal to 10 volts now we have to find the value of VB now for the value of VB there's only one loop you can um, find the value of VB oh actually there are two loops you can find the value of VB by um, measuring the voltages of this loop and the measuring of um, the whole circuit as a loop. So let's do the small loop first. So I'm going clockwise again. So minus and plus, so it's going to be minus of 10 volts. It's again going from negative to positive. So it's going to be minus of VB. And then it's going from positive to negative. So it's going to be plus. Vc that is 10 volts equal to 0 